guys! This is Mama Lu. Welcome back to my YouTube channel! Ko will consist or will contain not only videos about cooking but also some lessons in mathematics. So, nakafocus ako ngayon sa grade 8 mathematics since yung isa kong anak ay grade 8. So, ang una nilang topic para sa first quarter ay factoring. Maraming estudyante nahihirapan sa factoring. Hindi nila alam na mahalaga ang topic na ito Kasi gagamitin nila ito sa mga future topics nila sa math. Like for example, kapag magsasolve ka ng quadratic equations, so kailangan mo ng knowledge in factoring. Kung ikaw ay magsasolve ng rational expressions, o kaya mag-graph ka ng uh, quadratic functions. So, very important na maintindihan mo kung ano ang factoring. So, ano nga ba ang factoring? Factoring is just the reverse process of multiplication. But when do we say that a polynomial is completely factored? Kasi sa mga instruction ng teacher, sasabihin niya, factor the following polynomials completely. Ano ibig sabihin ng completely factored? So, a polynomial is completely factored if each of its factors can no longer be expressed as a product of two or more polynomials of lower degree. So, yun po, kapag hindi mo na pwedeng i-express yung isang polynomial as a product of two other polynomials of lower degrees, then it is said to be completely factored. So, ano ang pinakamahalagang konsepto na dapat maunang matutunan ng estudyante bago siya mag-factor ng isang polynomial? Yun po ay ang GCF. GCF. Napakahalagang alam muna ng bata na kumuha o malaman niya kung ano ang GCF bago siya mag-factor ng isang polynomial. So, ano nga po ba itong GCF or Greatest Common Factor? It is the largest integer, monomial, multinomial that a set of polynomials have in common. So, halimbawa, pinakuha sa inyo ang GCF nitong mga numbers na ito. Let's say, we have 12, 24, and 60. You're asked to find the GCF of 12, 24, and 60. Okay. So, one way of getting the GCF of these numbers is you're going to express each number as a product of its prime factors. Uh, naalala po ba natin no ating uh, elementary yung factor 3? Ganito po ang ginagawa. Let's say 12, pinafactor yung 12, so, we have 4 and 3 as factors. And then, kapag hindi pa siya prime number, you have to uh, express it as a product of prime numbers. So, since 4 is not yet a prime number, so you have to factor 4. We have 2 times 2. Then, 3 is a prime number. So, ibaba lang natin yung 3. So, we have 2 times 2 times 3. So, all of these numbers are prime. So, since all these numbers are prime, so these are the prime factors of 12. So, we have 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, next is 24. So, what are the factors of 24? So, it can be 8 times 3. Now, 8 is not a prime number, so we have to factor 8. So, the factors of 8 are 4 and 2. And then, since 3 is a prime number, you just bring it down, times 3. 
Okay, 4 is not yet a prime number, so we factor 4. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So all of these numbers are prime, so lagay natin dito sa taas, so we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So we have 3 twos and 1 3. Okay? So the next number is 60. So what are the possible factors of 60? So it can be 6 times 10. 6 times 10 is 60. Now, 6 is not a prime number, so we factor 6. The factors are 2 times 3. How about 10? So we have 2 times 5. Now, since all the factors are prime, so we put them here. So we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. Now, these are the prime factors of 12, 24, and 60. 2 times 2 times 3 can also be written as 2 squared times 3. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 can be written as 2 cubed times 3. Okay, then we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 can also be written as 2 squared times 3 times 5. Okay. So, we bring down all the common factors. So, since we have 2 here, times 2, times 3, okay, 2 is not, there's no 2 here in 12 and 60, so it's not a common factor. And also, 5. So, we only have 2 times 2 times 3 as common factors. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So the GCF of 12, 24, and 60 is 12. Okay, let's take this one. So we have 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 squared. So common factor is 2 squared times 3. So 2 squared is 4 times 3. So that's the same. The GCF is 12. See? Ganun lang kadali kuhanin ang pagkuha na ang uh, kuhanin ang common factor ng uh, integers. Okay. Now, Another shorter way of getting the GCF of these three numbers is like this, no? So we have 12, 24, and 60. Pagsabay-sabayin na natin kuhanin yung common sa kanilang tatlo. So we think of the smallest prime number that can be used as the divisor of 12, 24 and 60. So it must be, okay, it must be 2. So the smallest prime, we start with the smallest prime number that can be used as a divisor of the given numbers. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 60 divided by 2 is 30. Okay. Now, we have 6, 12, and 30. We again think of a number, a prime number, that can be used as a divisor of the three numbers. Let's think of the smallest number first, prime number. So, I think it's 2 again. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 30 divided by 2 is... 15. Okay, so we have these three numbers, 3, 6, and 15. So, what do you think is the prime number that can divide the three of them? 
Hindi siya pwede sa 2 because 3 is not divisible by 2. Although 6 is divisible by 2. And 15 is not also divisible by 2. So what do you think is that prime number that can divide the 3 numbers? Okay, so it must be 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 15 divided by 3 is... Five. Okay, now with these three numbers, one, two, and five, we can see prime numbers here. So we stop with the process. No, because these are already prime numbers. Okay, so what is the GCF? We have two times two times three. Two times two is four. Three times three is 12. So we still get the same answer. So this is a lot shorter compared to this one. Example. Let's try this one. Find the GCF of x squared, x cubed, and x to the seventh power. Okay, so let's try to factor each term. So we have x, x squared. What are the factors of x squared? So x squared can be thought of x being multiplied by itself twice. So x squared is x times x. x cubed is x times x times x. And then x to the seventh is x times x times x times x, we're going to multiply x by itself 7 times. 1, 2, 3, 4 times x times x times x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, let us see the common factor. So we have x, another x. How about the other x? Are we going to add another x to the common factor? No, because it's only x cubed and x7 has, uh, which has x. So x squared does not have another x here. Okay, so therefore, the common factor is x times x or x squared. That is the GCF. So as you can see, by simply observing... The GCF of x squared, x cubed, and x to the 7th power is x squared. So, what do you think is the shortcut? So, to get the GCF of these terms? Okay, we just get the smallest exponent among, among the variables given x squared, x cubed, and x to the 7th, the GCF is x squared. Okay, let's try another one. We have 24m squared, n cubed, o cubed, 30m cubed, m, o to the 4th, and 48m, n squared, o squared. So let's look at the GCF of the numerical coefficients first. So the numerical coefficients we have 24, 30, and 48. Like what we did earlier, we just uh, use this method. We look for the prime number that can divide the three of them. So it must be 2. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 30 divided by 2 is 15. 48 divided by 2 is 24. Okay, another one. We have 12, 15, and 24. The prime number that can divide the three numbers is, is it 2? No, because 15 is not divisible by 2. So it must be, okay, let's try 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, 
Now, we have 4, 5, and 8. So, since we have one prime number here, so we stop. So, the GCF of 24, 30, and 48 is 6. Okay? So, the GCF is 2 times 3, and that is 6. Now, what happened to the uh, literal coefficients? We have m squared, m, m. So, the common factor is m. Okay? Then we have n cube, n cube, and n squared. The common factor is n squared. The smallest exponent, remember. We have o cube, o to the fourth, and o, squ o squared. The common factor is o squared. So this is the GCF of the given terms. Okay, so I'm sure you are now ready to factor polynomials. Why? Because you already know how to get the GCF. And it calls for a celebration. Okay, so let's now try to factor the following polynomials or expressions. So first step, pag nagpa-factor tayo ng polynomials, is to look for the common monomial factor. Okay, so that's the first step. Look for the common monomial factor. Okay, so we have 8x cubed minus 8x. What do you think is the common factor of the first and the second terms? So we have the numerical coefficients, 8. So it must be 8. Okay, the first term is x cubed, 8x cubed, and the second term is 8x. So, is x a common factor? Yes, it is. This is x cubed. This is 8x. So, x is the common factor. So, we now have 8x as the common monomial factor of the given expression. To get the polynomial factor, we simply divide each term of the given expression or of the given polynomial by the given monomial factor. So the first term is 8x cubed. We divide 8x cubed by 8x. So 8x cubed divided by 8x, 8 is cancelled, becomes 1. x cubed over x, that must be x squared. Okay, so it should be x squared. Okay, because we subtract the exponent. Remember, the laws of exponent that you have learned in grade 7. So, 8x cubed divided by 8x is x squared. That's x squared. Okay, then we have the minus sign here. Minus. 8x divided by 8x. So, what is 8x divided by 8x? 8 divided by 8 cancelled. x over x is cancelled. So, we have 1. So, these are the factors of the given expression. 8x times x squared minus 1 or x 8x times the quantity x squared minus 1. As I mentioned before, dun sa opening uh, ng ating ng lesson, the factoring is just the reverse of special products or multiplication. If we look at, we try to get the product of these two factors, 8x times x squared, so that is x cubed. So that's the same with that. Minus 8x times 1 is 8x. So you will still get this uh, expression. So see, factoring is just the reverse of multiplication.
Okay, let's try our third example. We have 3 times x plus y minus a times x plus y. So, we consider this one as a binomial. Why? This is our first term. This is our second term. We just look at the plus and minus sign that separates them. No? So, here is the minus sign. So, we have 1, 2. So, we have two terms. Okay. What is there in the first term that is also in the second term? So, it must be x plus y because they have x plus y. Both of them have x plus y. So, the common factor is x plus y. So, we divide each term by x plus y. 3x plus y divided by x plus y. So, the answer is 3 minus a, a x plus y divided by x plus y. So, we have A. So, the factors are x plus y times the quantity 3 minus A. So, these are the factors of the given polynomial. Okay, what about number 4? We have KR plus KB minus PR minus PB. This time, the given polynomial consists of 4 terms. So, if a polynomial consists of 4 or more terms, we can apply grouping. Okay, so how do we group? How do we group this polynomial? We are going to group polynomials which you think have common factors. So let's say for example, we group the first two, the first two terms. Okay? So KR plus KB. Because obviously, there is a common factor which is K. Okay? So we group them. Minus PR and PB. They have the same factor, which is P. So, minus PR plus PB. Bakit natin pinalitan yung sign? Kanina, negative. Bakit ginawa natin positive? Why? Because we have here a minus sign. Remember, if the parenthesis is preceded by a negative sign, we have to change the sign of each of the terms inside the parenthesis. Okay, now let's factor the first group. KR plus KB, the common factor is K. So, dividing each term here, KR divided by K is R plus KB divided by K is B minus what about PR plus PB? What's the common factor? So, it must be P. Alright, P. PR divided by P is R plus PB divided by P is B. Okay, can you see common factor here in our binomial? Okay, the common factor is R plus B. Okay, R plus B. K, R plus B divided by R plus B. So, that's K minus P, R plus B divided by R plus B. That's P. So, these are the factors. R plus B times the quantity K minus P. Now, what if we combined the first and the third or we group the first and the third the second and the last. As long as they have common factors, pwede. So, let's say KR minus PR. There's a common factor, which is R. So, pwede yun. And then, plus KB minus PB. The common factor is 
B. So, KR minus PR, the common factor is R. So, we have here KR divided by R is K minus PR divided by R is P plus KB minus PB. The common factor is B. KB divided by B is K minus PB divided by B is P. So, can you see common factors? Yes, there is. And that is K minus P. Okay? So, R, K minus P divided by K minus B. That's R plus B. K minus P divided by K minus B is, K minus P is B. Okay. So, these are the factors. Did we get the same factors? Okay, K minus P, then R plus B. Okay, same factors.